Next top five video will be the top five trading resources that I use every day, day to day, to look for information. Where do I go to get what I need to make the moolah? Number five, this list is in no particular order. You can't talk about trading without TradingView. Love them or hate them, they have a monopoly. They do good stuff. Uh, you don't need a pro account to be successful. I have a pro account now, uh, you, but you definitely don't need it. There are tons of, of resources even within TradingView that I don't talk about or I've even fully explored. A big one for me, and I think in the beginning, was just looking through other people's stuff. You need exposure. You know, you might look at this and say, I don't know anything about any of these charts. I don't know the pairs. I don't know what, what a cipher is, okay? But if you're inquisitive, if, you, if you're curious, if you want to learn, what you need to do is get exposure, start Googling this stuff, look it up, read about it, write it down, uh, and don't take anyone else's analysis as gospel, but just expose yourself to what's out there, the possibilities, how to incorporate these things into your own analysis. And this is for the people without a pro account, but in order to save more charts than you actually are able to, so without a pro account, you have five charts you can save. Uh, what you can do within that, thanks to uh, the diverse crypto system, uh, is make a chart for each separate exchange. Uh, that way you can store multiple ideas at once if you if you need to. And if you're ever not sure where the stuff you drew is, um, you can go to this thing called the object tree. It'll show you, you know, oh, I have a lot of things on Doge here. Why? What is there? What could it be? So you can, you know, I have a hard time finding stuff sometimes, so I have to look at the object tree to see what's going on. And it'll show me that I have all the, these drawings here. So that's where I store my, my Doge weekly chart. Okay. Next, let's talk about a group of sites I use for information to write articles that I write for various coins. I write for Brave New Coin. You probably realize that. Uh, I'm going to mention them because there's a lot of data here that's not very well outward to everybody and available. I and we will be working on changing that next year. The website's going to get a dramatic overhaul. I don't know when, but I've definitely given them lots of input and we're continually working on that. So if you have anything that you'd like to see on a specific website, my big thing is I use a bunch of websites for information. Why can't I just use one website for all that information? So that's what we're going to be working on. Specifically for Brave New Coin, you know, they have a market cap table. It's not great. I know that. They know that. We're working on making it better. Uh, there's a news section. Again, it's not, you know, it's not like Bitcoin Magazine where the news is visually just sorted for you Im immediately. But there's tons of data here that nobody really uses as far as I can tell. It's just in the retail space. They have plenty of partners. Uh, for instance, Bloomberg uses their index, which is pretty cool. Uh, and their data is going to be used by this place called Bar Chart, which is a uh, Chicago data aggregator for institutional investors. So Brave New Coin, that's one thing. Uh, On-chain FX, again, exploded kind of out of nowhere compared to something like Coin Market Cap, which I hesitate to even mention. <laughs> but uh, for me, this is the data I want to see. It's kind of like uh, World of Warcraft versus Diablo 3. Okay, Diablo 3 had minimalistic data visualization and statistics, and you didn't really know what was what or even how good uh, abilities were versus others. I've never played WoW, but in WoW there's uh, tons of information that you can sort through. And this is what I want to see. This is what I want to look at, use information on. You can sort anything you want. You can flag stuff. There are tons of exclusionary, inclusionary criteria. You can publish lists. Pretty sure this is only one guy, which is crazy. Uh, but that's sometimes all it takes, you know, just one man with a dream or one woman with a dream. But yeah, great job. I don't know who does this website. Uh, they're slowly adding stuff. It certainly isn't as expansive as Brave New Coins or Coin Market Caps market table, but I think it does the best job at a market cap table that I've come across. And I've certainly been using this more and more. Crypto Maps, interesting type of heat map for movement. Uh, I don't use this necessarily for trading decisions, but it helps me quickly look at things that the market cap table doesn't illuminate as well. You know, if, if I sort by change in BTC, USD, whatever, I can see that. But I really like this because it's sort of sorted by volume. You can do other things with it. You can do coins versus tokens. 
Uh, I'd like to see a little improvements on this. I'd like to make my own list personally, uh, but it's nice to just see everything and look over it. You know, ETH is moving, IOTA is moving, LTC up 20%. I had no idea until looking at this that that's going on. Uh, Bcash is up 9%, EOS, EOS 11, whatever this is, Populous. So it's interesting, you just you get to look at the volume relative to other stuff. You can see Bitcoin is basically eating everything. But it's something to, to look at, to add to your repertoire. You know, when I sit down the first time of the day, I look at on-chain FX, I look at crypto maps. <laughs> the first two things I look at to start my day. Let's talk about BitInfo charts as well. I mentioned this a few times. They've done a great job of listing this information and aggregating it. Uh, when I'm making these articles, it's very hard for me to track down this information for this stuff. I generally have to search through subreddits and multiple pages of Google <laughs> to like find the hash rate or like transactions for Ripple, for instance. Uh, very hard to, to track down this stuff. So I'm really thankful for this person. I don't know who it is. Uh, probably one guy again. I don't know. Uh, but they're starting to add more and more stuff. So I'd like to see this integrated into a, uh, you know, on-chain effects or a market cap table type situation, which I think would be possible. And then lastly, another website that's just one guy, fork.lol, popped up out of nowhere. Much needed data visualizations for Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash, uh, blocks, proof of work. Uh, just a really great and well done website. The next resource I use more often than not is YouTube which is how I learned most of what I learned regarding trading, probably because I'm very visual. A lot of people ask me about books. I've never read a single book about anything in trading. Uh, I've, I mean, I've read a few PDFs, but for the most part, I'm watching videos, I'm seeing people chart. It's especially important to see legacy people chart, especially successful legacy people. This is people in FX and stocks. Uh, you know, anybody mentioned on things like Chat with the Traders podcast, generally has some sort of social media presence. Uh, some of them have a YouTube presence. People like Triforce Trader, Matt if Owens, I think is his name. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. You know, Tone Vase, if love, love him or hate him, Jimmy Song, World Crypto Network, you know, all that stuff is great because it gives new media, which is uh, things like Twitter, YouTube, a voice versus, you know, mainstream financial press, mainstream media. I don't like the term mainstream media, but you know what I mean. And, you know, you can search for anything. And I highly recommend using YouTube. I, like, I can't stress that enough. I wouldn't be where I am without YouTube and seeing how other people do it, which is one of the main reasons I started this channel, to give information back to people that just wasn't out there regarding crypto. The next resource you should be using is yourself. You should be saving all your charts, all your ideas, you should be posting most of your ideas on TradingView. I wouldn't worry about what anybody has to say about them. Uh, that's not the point. The point is you can go back and look at your stuff. If you look at my old stuff, it's way different from what it is now. So it's interesting to see your own trading evolution. And it's important to save these ideas because you can look back on them to see if you were right or you, or you were wrong. You know, especially if you're taking trades on this stuff and you're saying to yourself, you know, that falling wedge didn't pan out like a falling wedge. It was there, yada, 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 whatever you want to say. But especially if you're new, you need to be looking at this stuff and keeping track of, did I make money here? Did I lose money here? Why did I lose money here? Why did I close this trade early? Uh, you should always record and document everything. Uh, sort it if you can. But for the most part, labeling it and sorting it, you know, is a personal preference. But when I'm looking back at things, I'm always looking at things I've, I've done or said before and seeing if they make sense. And lastly, there's a few specific trading websites that aggregate information, uh, definitions for new traders. Investopedia, I think most people have heard of. Never be afraid to just look through here for patterns, concepts, ideas, things you don't know about. I see way too many people asking someone directly what things are. You need to do that yourself. You need to look around Google, look around Investopedia. You're not going to learn if everybody just spoon feeds you the information. Uh, stock charts I actually like even better than Investopedia. It really breaks things down nicely, when it, especially patterns, you know, X, Y, Z as far as where you should get in, where you should get out, what it should look like, things like that. Uh, Babypips.com is another one. They do a really great job of breaking down even things I've never heard of, uh, mainly for Forex, but most of which applies to crypto as well. So if you're super new, I'd check them out, especially 
there's like quizzes and things you can learn about various terms. And I'll also mention Bulkowski's pattern site, which was basically built in his mom's basement on GeoCities in 1998. But it's got some really great info on patterns, um, cup and handle, you know, any any pattern. Uh, he has lots of data that he's sort of broken down statistically, tells you when to get in, when to get out, what it should look like. It's a little different than stock charts. So those are my top five trading resources categorized specifically for you, the crypto trader.